I just bought a pair of IBM ThinkPad laptops. They're both 765D models released in about 1997, making them 25 years old. Now, this is quite a heavy box and I haven't opened it yet, so I think it's time we should open it up and see exactly what I got. These came all the way from Tasmania and I was offered them at a reasonable price by one of my viewers. Both of the laptops came with what I assume are their original carrying bags with IBM branding, another item I can use in my shrine dedicated to IBM. Inside the first bag is a CD-ROM drive, the power adapter, a USB mouse for some reason, and the ThinkPad itself. I must say the bottom casing is a bit stickier than I was anticipating. Yeah, these ThinkPads came with a rubberized coating and that started to melt in an irreversible way. In other words, you either have to live with the stickiness or scrape it off. Will the other ThinkPad be as melty? Sadly, it sure is, and thankfully there isn't any major damage and the models have a unique raised keyboard. This was done for the sake of ergonomics. And back in 1997, this model started at around 6,500 US dollars, adjusted for inflation around 12,000, with one of the main highlights being the 1024 by 768 high-end 13-inch display. That will enable the force to be with you. And powering these laptops is a 166 megahertz Intel Pen with MMX, a powerful chip at the time. Along with the nifty raised keyboard, the power adapter's plug end fits into the brick itself. But when I attempted to power on the first ThinkPad, it didn't seem to do anything. Both of these machines at the very least powered on according to the seller, who even showed me photos. I simply disconnected then reconnected the battery and it sprung into life. The unit that supposedly had a dead hard disk surprisingly loaded into Windows 98. It even had 64 megabytes of RAM, double what it would have originally come with. Whoever owned this one didn't delete their files either, and let's just say I definitely can't show you them without this video getting age restricted. Maybe that's why the casing is a bit sticky. The other ThinkPad also boot up fine. I did notice one of the clips had snapped off during shipping though. I suggested the seller wrap the laptops in bubble wrap even if he is including the bags, but oh well. The first thing I wanted to do, after deleting all the explicit material and defragmenting the hard disk, using a cheap PC card to CF card adapter, I copied over some files. And since these machines don't have USB, this is the quickest way to transfer large files without burning a lot of CDs. In both the ThinkPads, I also found these modem cards, and sadly without the adapters, with the selling point being it's compatible with Nokia phones of all things. I did have to write the sound drivers to floppy disk though, and I ended up finding the correct drivers online after a bit of searching. These were installed across three discs which had no problem being read by the ThinkPad. We now had sound and the 98 startup chime is a truly glorious thing to hear. The internals of this laptop mimic the engine bay of a car, with the keyboard deck acting like a bonnet that you lift up. This even allowed you to put a second battery in place of the floppy or CD drive. And now that I've got all the drivers installed correctly, I wanted to try the CD-ROM drive, which was quite easy to install. And oh yeah, there was this disk in the drive. Could anything be on it? The answer is the Windows 98 second edition install CD. And before we play some games on them, I think it's time we give them a good cleaning. And the rubberized casing is a real problem, and I'll try to remove it from one of these. And let's hope for my sake, I don't end up making it worse. And this video wouldn't be possible without today's sponsor, Brilliant. If you're looking to sharpen up your skills in math, science, or even computer science, Brilliant has a lot to offer. While I'm not much of an academic type, after Brilliant reached out to me, I've been doing a few lessons and found the logic-based problem solving to be a lot of fun. If it's not apparent, I enjoy problem solving, and keeping your mind sharp is crucial to success. You really feel like you're making progress as you complete more and more of the lessons. There's college-level content for everyone across thousands of lessons and new exclusive content being released monthly. From the foundations of computer science to gravitational physics and mathematics, there is something for every corner of STEM. The fun Fundamentals start off easier, great for learning the basics, but the courses get into some really high level problem solving. And simply by doing a few lessons each day, I found myself hungry to keep learning more. And since I worked with Brilliant Last, I was able to problem solve and fix that car I mentioned. Problem solving can be fun, and with Brilliant, you can become a better problem solver and critical thinker. To get started for free, visit brilliant.org forward slash pcivrite or click the link in the description below. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. 
First of all, I reattached the lifting mechanism that came off one of them, and after letting it dry for a bit, it seemed to be quite strong. And the rubber on the display assemblies of both laptops don't seem to be melting, thankfully. The only other bit of damage was the ejecting lever for the PC card, and I bent the pin back into shape, then seated it correctly, problem solved. Using some spray and wipe, I attempted to clean off the other surfaces, which remained somewhat sticky. It seems as if all the rubber would need removing to solve this issue. More on that later in the video. The keyboard area was quite filthy on this particular ThinkPad, with some keycaps very worn, particularly the N and M keys. Maybe one of you might be able to clue me into what this laptop might have originally been used for. Some eucalyptus oil and a toothbrush really helped to remove debris around the sides of the keys. The palm rest was also not immune from the worsening rubber coating, with even a gentle wipe with spray and wipe causing some of it to come off. And inside, I decided to simply dust out the removable drive area. There's not much reason to disassemble it further since it's currently working. Oh, and here's where the two RAM slots are, shielded underneath the hard disk area. To clean off the display, I used some lens cleaner and a microfiber cloth, which made a big difference. And moving over to the other ThinkPad, I began the laborious task of removing the rubberized coating. And using a small amount of 100% isopropyl alcohol, the coating slowly started to come off. And one downside is that any lettering or icons on the rubber was also coming off. But it's a small price to pay for a system that won't stick to you. And it also seemed as if eucalyptus oil made it a lot easier to remove the coating. So I brought out the big guns. 100% full strength eucalyptus oil, beginning with a light coating to help break it down. It was at this point where I realized scraping most of the coating off was the best way, and I used a soft plastic tool to help prevent scratching on the surface underneath. I was quite surprised how easily the coating was coming off, especially around the edges where it was most melty. And once most of it was removed, a bit of full strength eucalyptus oil helped to finish it off. The palm rest on this particular ThinkPad was pretty sticky, so it had to go. The surface underneath was quite smooth, and I was able to avoid scratching it. The biggest area of rubber was the back of the laptop. It was also some of the stickiest, especially around the edges. And if you use this on your lap, it would definitely leave black marks on your clothing. I wish I had a time machine so I could go back and tell manufacturers not to coat their premium devices in soft rubber. And unlike the other ThinkPad, this one has a larger 5GB drive, which would have been very expensive. But what if you wanted a cheaper IBM ThinkPad in 1997? Well, you could have opted for the 380ED, this model costing only $2,599, less than half as much as the 765D, albeit with a smaller, lower resolution and far lower quality display. The display goes quite badly and has far worse contrast and peak brightness. It is also chunkier. But not by that much. But since it was a lower end model, it lacked the rubberized coating that would eventually start to melt. And I must say the 765D with the rubber removed is a much nicer laptop to use. Now let's play some games on it. After comparing it to the awful display of the 380ED, I really appreciate just how nice this one is. The original Monster Truck Madness does run on here, but the very basic graphics chip does mean you'll have to lower the detail or resolution to get a smooth frame rate. Games such as the original Age of Empires run well, but I would strongly suggest using an external mouse as the pointing up made it quite challenging. And I just had to try some old DOS games. And being such a high resolution display, it seemed to have some trouble scaling up the image. But these games are still very much playable regardless. The display is crisp, bright, and has good contrast for a 25 year old laptop. Early 3D games also run very well on this ThinkPad. Duke Nukem 3D is definitely one of my favorites. It's crazy to think how much the 765D cost back in 1997, and I'm super glad to have one in my collection. Thank you very much for watching. I really had a lot of fun with these old ThinkPads. There's just something so tangible and interesting about their design, and I'll probably end up selling one of them off and definitely keeping one in my collection. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. If you've liked the video, feel free to leave a like, and if you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.